never the same thing or the same place for David Bowie. In rehearsal for a new tour, Bowie also has a new album that's based on his new book. This time around, Bowie is deep in dangerous territory for an artist in the late 90s. This new project is all about sex, violence, and death. And the first video from the disc, The Heart's Filthy Lesson, is meant to kickstart Bowie and his audience right into the new millennium. The idea that there are absolutes, there's an absolute church, an absolute art system, an absolute politic, doesn't seem to make any sense now. As we pull back the covers of our reality and find that in fact indeed chaos is is a far more accurate picture of what we are and how we live than all those defined ideas of this is the right way and this is the wrong way those things seem so uh, impractical and 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 something that actually doesn't describe our situation so it really puts the artist in another place there's a lot of kind of there was a lot of Kind of ambient noise as well in there, yeah? Yeah. Leave that in this time. Can we just practice it one more time so yeah. we can see where the ending actually is? Bowie says it's loud, furious, and fractured, just like these final years of the millennium. He sees sex and violence and death exploding out of the art scene today. And it's the artistic trend of using razors and needles and blood to make art that he's focused on in Outside. A topic made to measure for Bowie, he knows it and has big plans. This would be the first in a series of albums outside. And ostensibly, it's a storyline and, and a narrative. But frankly, that, that's just subject matter. But the, um, the intention would be is to capture the spirit of each year as it, it goes past over the next five years. So by the year 2000, we've virtually created a, a musical and textual diary of the last five years of the millennium, which is a, a pompous kind of ambition, but I think it's one worth, <laughs> well, at least trying to um, uh, complete. Bowie's only rule for this project was to stay outside the musical mainstream. He teamed up with ambient noise guru Brian Eno, the producer of some of Bowie's most successful work, and together they created a disc that takes more from the avant-garde scene than from rock and roll. That's the key to Bowie's success. It's what he lifts from popular culture. From the beginning, Bowie's talent was holding up a mirror and reflecting trends back to us before we even knew there were trends. It may not have been original, but it was never boring. His uncanny take on the moment moved him up the top 10 in the 80s when every day was a perfect hair day and music had as much to do with money as Muse. By the late 80s, all Bowie needed to do was put on a suit and show up and he satisfied our latest fascination. Sure, he was famous, but he was bored, and so were the critics. Instead of being slightly ahead of his time, he was falling behind it. Now at 48, Bowie needs to once again reinvent himself, and this time something more than a costume change is in order. Outside may help. The ideas and images he's using are fairly out there, although he's not the only one working this beat. But Bowie hasn't shaken his old theatrical approach. He still refuses to play himself. In fact, this time around, he's playing seven different characters. It all started with a story he wrote called The Diary of Nathan Adler, or The Art Ritual Murder of Baby Grace Blue. Nathan Adler is a detective in the Art Crimes Unit. It was at precisely 5.47 a.m. on the morning of Friday, 31st of December, 1999, that a dark-spirited pluralist began the dissection 14-year-old baby Grace. Turns out, artists at the end of the millennium are moving from mutilating their own bodies in gruesome performance pieces to mutilating other people's. Detective Nathan Adler is called in to uncover the ring of artists who murder to get body parts for their art. The suspects? Leon Blank, previous conviction for plagiarism without license. 
Ramona A. Stone, the no future priestess of the Caucasian Suicide Temple, and Algeria Touchshriek, male, 78, deals in art drugs and DNA prints. Sounds like science fiction, but scratch the surface of the big cities of the world and you'll find much of what Bowie writes about happening now. The torso, by means of its bottommost orifice, had been placed on a small support fastened to a marble base. It was shown to varying degrees of success, depending upon where one stood from behind the web, but in front of the museum door itself, acting as both signifier and guardian to the act. It was definitely murder. But was it art? My input was quite varied. It ranged from neo-paganism to feelings about ritual and body art and extrapolating on that. What fascinates you about that and artists um, that are into this scene? I'm not so sure that the thing actually fascinates me as much as I see it more as, a, uh, as an artistic trend and that's the aspect of it that interests me is why. And my own take on it is that as we uh, enter into the, this final phase of the millennium that there's almost um, because possibly the Judeo-Christian ethic doesn't actually embrace uh, our feelings and our fears of sex and violence, that it really ends up in the um, area of popular culture to assimilate those fears and terrors. Bowie uses image perhaps even more effectively than music. These carefully selected images for Hart's filthy lesson pack a punch for sure. Hart's Filthy Lesson, I think, probably some of my input was the uh, thing that you uh, either become comfortable or in live in terror of as you get older, which is uh, that life is finite, that there's um, a physical end to it, that you die. I think the filthy lesson of the heart is when that's sort of, when you really understand that, that, that you die. Bowie's thought a lot about this new artistic trend of self-mutilation, and he sees it making sense both to himself and his pop audience as the millennium rushes towards its demise. I think that we um, do have great problems with both uh, death, violence, and, and sex. Three things. Um, and I think that ritual art is in some way created out of some dimly remembered idea of paganism before the Judeo-Christian ethic. And it's kind of a bloodletting. It's, it's almost a, some, there's some, something in there which reminds me of uh, um, appeasing the gods, that if we, if we spill blood and appease the gods, then we'll kind of go into the next millennium OK. <laughs> That's the inside track. But Bowie's pop audience won't get the inside track. They won't hear the story or the album before they see the video. Will they get Bowie's intellectual comment on this latest trend, or will they be disturbed by it? And Canadian audiences, still reeling from the horrific Bernardo trial, may be hypersensitive to the images of the video. No one in Switzerland or Iceland or whatever is going to have is going to bring anything like that to this video. And in a way, we're, we're co-authoring that work. You know. John Sakamoto of the Toronto Sun has been following Bowie for years. And video, because you don't have to worry about narrative continuity or any of those inconvenient concepts, it's, I just think it's, it's way too easy. And in this case, they have taken the easy route of just compiling a string of images, of shocking images, which, which doesn't require any thought. You know. Uh, someone taking a chainsaw to a mannequin and, and having fake blood on the front of them and, and piercing, uh, you know, piercing their face with needles. Well, well, I think I think those images in the context of a four-minute and fifty-eight-second video can't be anything but exploited because there's no no time or room to put them in any context. My intention uh, is merely the process and the creation of the piece. Um, any interpretation that that you can, you yourself as audience or whatever, or listener, 
gleans from it is entirely your responsibility. That once I've created the thing, my responsibility ends. Uh, my, in, my input uh, may be very different from your interpretation, which is as it should be in this part of the late part of the 20th century. I don't buy the line that an artist can abdicate responsibility for his work. I think that's, I just think that's, uh, it's ridiculous. I think the public can take away that responsibility for him in the manner in which it chooses to interpret somebody's work. The final shot of that video is, is Bowie removing a mask, you know, a very tired, cliched image, but uh, um, I think that's, that's his uh, attempt to tell you that what has come before is something more than just a string of shocking images. But in the end, is that really enough? As always, Bowie remains detached and removed from this trend of ritualistic art he's so powerfully captured here. Ironic that Bowie, an artist who refuses to accept responsibility for his creation, has surrounded himself with these artists who take ultimate responsibility for their art. Every performance creates scars and damage they must carry for the rest of their lives. The question Bowie may be exploring here is not, is it art, but a much more personal one of what is an artist. What about taking these images and these ideas that were never intended for a mainstream audience, never looked for a mainstream audience, yeah. and you repackaging, repackaging them and using them in a different way and throwing them out to that audience, are there risks involved in that? I think it's uh, far riskier to stay in uh, the parameters of a world that you're familiar with because you risk becoming less of a person, less inquisitive, less curious, less fired and uh, emotionally involved with life because when you work in the areas that you're sure of and you know there aren't going to be sort of interesting accidents, <laughs> then that kind of complacency gives you blinders and, and you don't look at what's happening outside because it'll throw into question what you're doing as an artist. Um, if you're free and have a sense of adventure about what you do, you're open to everything in life, I think. You're outside. <laughs> you're outside. <laughs> David Bowie's rushing to the new millennium, but for an artist who has built a career on seeing the next big thing, forsaking the past and the present, the future is all he's got left. For The National, I'm Laurie Brown. <laughs>